I've met a lot of damn bass players throughout my career, but these two are the worst. Jamer's not used to play with one sound. I don't need all of those effects, the audience won't even notice it. I just won't... You know what I mean, okay? In 90% of cases, it's true, but it's that 10% that makes the difference between an amateur musician and a pro one. Hi, Fioi, my name is Gianluca, welcome back to the channel, and today I want to show you a bunch of sound that can really make you sound like a pro. Fioi, we are in 2022, music is laptop produced, so you need to be able to sound like a synth. But don't worry, four step is what it takes, and you don't even need MIDI. How can we go from ear to something like this? First of all, of course, a clean bass sound. But we need to get rid of that spanky and sharp attack. So what I suggest you to do, if you can, of course, play with the neck pickup, if you have one, like this. And to get even a softer type of attack and tone, close your tone knob to taste, I like to completely shut it off, and play with this finger over your fingerboard. Listen to the difference as I'm playing towards the neck uh, bridge. Sorry, I'm Italian. And then of course to emulate that square wave, so to vibe, we need a fuzz, but not overly distorted, just a tiny bit of fuzz to get the saturation. feature about synthesizers is the ability to play different octave per every oscillator. So what you need is an octave pedal. You can blend it to taste, but because I want it to sound like a nature so we need really low S kind of notes, I like to blend it 100% so I'm getting only the octave down. Synthesizers have the ability even to fine-tune different oscillators. So when you slightly detune different oscillators, you get a natural chorus sound. So of course we need a chorus. And this is how you go from here to here. If you want to get deeper into this topic, there's a video up here, I don't remember where, that you can check. Now let's get back to the basics. The first and most important sound is a compressed, fat, clean bass sound that really feels and supports the mix. Even if they cannot hear you, you are the glue of the mix. And because of that, my favorite way to do so is to blend two different sounds together. One low compressor, like this. The second one responsible for mids and eyes, slightly saturated and of course a little bit compressed. Now let's hear it in context. enough to still play the classic, you know, music from the 60s and the 70s, if you really carefully listen to the bass sounds, they are always a little bit saturated and not so full of frequency, like this.
what I have here is an emulation of a vintage MPEG head, the Portaflex, if I can remember correctly. That sounds like this. <laughs> But to get that vintage tone right, I'm playing with just the bridge. Because back in the day, the precision was the only bass, almost. But now I wanted to sound a little bit darker, so instead of dialing back the treble on the amp, I decided to roll down a little the tone knob, almost uh, halfway, okay? From here to here. But because I want the mids uh, to jump even more and to emulate the tape compression, the tape saturation, I'm running it through a compressor. So this is a Dynacomp emulation and it sounds like this. But if you play with bridge pickup, you can get into some more funky, Jaco-esque kind of tone. Forget for my playing, I'm not a, a real bass player, okay? This is really a classy move, especially for a live perk. If you're in a band with just one guitar player, when he goes for a solo, it's like someone ripped a hole in the mix. Like this. This is because of the poor harmonic content of this instrument. And what I learned to do is engaging some sort of saturation distortion in those occasions. That will generate more harmonic content and fill the mix as much as it could. Fuzz, in my opinion, is the best option, but you can even experiment with distortion and overdrive without any problem. Listen to the difference and let me know what you think in the comments. Let's call it a day, Fioi. I hope that this video will be useful in some way. My name again is Gianluca. I'm a guitar player, singer, and songwriter, and sometimes even a bass player from Italy. And every week I explore sounds and boundaries of music here on YouTube. So if you like this kind of shit, subscribe to the channel. You have no excuse. And also, if you are interested in other bass tone tutorial, there's a playlist somewhere here that you can check. And until next time, remember, you're lucky, my man.